Hello, this is Dr. Stanley Kim. Today, we will discuss about iron deficiency anemia and the anemia of chronic disease, the two most common anemias in worldwide. Thank you for watching. When the MCB is less than 80 femtoliter, it's called microcytic anemia, which encompasses um, iron deficiency anemia, thalassemia, anemia of chronic disease, anemia from lead poisoning, sideroblastic anemia. When the MCB is over uh, 100, it's a macrocytic anemia. Macrocytic anemia includes megaloblastic anemia. Megaloblastic anemia uh, encompasses pernicious anemia and anemia of vitamin B12, folic acid, folate, and the copper deficiency. Any anemias associated with reticulocytosis, such as hemolytic anemia, uh, is a macrocytic anemia because the size of reticulocyte is much bigger than mature RBCs. Therefore, the MCV of hemolytic anemia is very, very frequently high. Alcoholism or alcoholic liver disease is associated with a macrocytosis, often without anemia. Alcohol appears to be toxic to the bone marrow. When you see a patient with a high MCV without any medical problems, Ask the patients if he uh, drinks alcohol. Patients with uh, MDS, myelodysplastic syndrome, frequently uh, show uh, macrocytic anemia. Chemotherapy drugs uh, often, causes, often cause macrocytosis because of their inhibition of DNA and the cell division. Patients with hypothyroidism occasionally present with a macrocytic anemia. Normal cytic anemia include most uh, hemolytic anemia uh, and uh, the uh, anemia of uh, chronic kidney disease. But the uh, mild form of anemia of chronic disease and the anemia uh, from iron deficiency can be uh, normal cytic as well. Iron deficiency anemia is the most common anemia worldwide. Uh, more common in women with childbearing age and the children. It's due to uh, blood loss or poor absorption or from both. Patients may have been bleeding without knowing from uh, gastrointestinal cancer like a colon cancer uh, or having heavy periods for a long time. Renal patients undergoing hemodialysis lose iron from the procedure. Patients having celiac disease, H. pylori infection, autoimmune atrophic gastritis, or gastric bypass uh, have a problem in absorbing iron. The H. pylori uh, infection is interesting. Uh, in one study, about half of all unexplained iron deficiency anemia was due to H. pylori infection of the stomach. Obese people who uh, underwent gastric bypass surgery developed deficiencies of iron, vitamin B12, and uh, copper because of the surgical bypassing the area essential for absorbing those vitamins and minerals. All those patients don't respond to oral iron therapy. You may, uh, you have to give uh, uh, intravenous iron infusion for treatment unless you cure the underlying conditions. We use erythropoietin, uh, we also call it EPO, for uh, hemodialysis patients and the cancer patients undergoing chemotherapy. In those chronic conditions, ions are not functioning, even they have enough ion storage in the body. The uh, EPO therapy can uh, mobilize those non-functioning ions and make them available for bone marrow to manufacture red blood cells. When all ions are used up to make blood in those cases, inevitably iron deficiency will uh, result unless iron supplements are given. Patients with the uh, iron deficiency develop general anemia symptoms such as easy fatigue, short of breath, palpitation, or headache. But surprisingly, patients may not have any symptoms when the anemia developed gradually over a long period of time. On the other hand, many patients have symptoms of anemia 
with the normal hemoglobin, uh, but when they have a low uh, ferritin, the uh, iron deficiency. I like to mention interesting symptoms and signs associated with iron deficiency anemia. The first one is a pica. Pica is an eating habit of something not nutritional or inedible, such as dirts or clays. Craving for ice is, is specific for iron deficiency anemia. So if you suspect iron deficiency, don't forget to ask a question of iron cra uh, ice craving. Restless, restless leg syndrome is another commonly occurring symptom related to iron deficiency. Uh, spoon nails, spoon-shaped nail of the fingers are uh, other uh, interesting signs of iron deficiency. Occasionally, patients develop plumber vincent syndrome, which encompass the uh, swallowing difficulty, uh, sore tongue, and the iron deficiency anemia. We will study uh, those symptoms in the next slide. Now, a laboratory test. Of course, CBC and the blood smear shows, show microcytic hypochromic anemia. Serum iron study will show low iron and the low ferritin level. And the high TIBC or transferrin and the low iron saturation. Of course, uh, a low reticulocyte count, which is indicative of uh, bone marrow activity, uh, low bone marrow activity. Interestingly, uh, iron deficiency anemia develop mild thrombosis, uh, not all the time, but frequently. The platelet counts may go up to 500 to 600. So when you see a, a high platelet counts, make sure to check the serum ferritin level. Uh, Differential diagnosis, well, before I go to differential, I'd like to mention that low serum iron level is also seen in anemia of chronic disease, as we will mention here. So low serum ferritin level is more specific for diagnosis of uh, iron deficiency anemia. But ferritin is uh, an acute phase reactant which increases in acute inflammation. So normal ferritin level cannot rule out iron deficiency, especially when the patient has some acute condition like acute infection. The differential diagnosis of iron deficiency include anemia of chronic disease, thalassemia, sideroblastic anemia, and anemia of lead poisoning, as those conditions cause microcytic anemia. In anemia of, uh, of chronic disease, there are enough absolute uh, iron, iron storage in the body, but due to underlying chronic disease, irons are not mobilized to make red blood cells. So serum iron level is low as, as is the uh, uh, iron deficiency anemia, but serum ferritin level is high or can be normal in anemia of chronic disease. Of course, in, chronic, uh, in iron deficiency, it, it should be low. Another, another interesting finding of uh, anemia of chronic disease is uh, they have a low transferrin, uh, I mean low tr uh, iron binding capacity or can be sometimes normal, so make the iron, iron saturation low. But iron deficiency, uh, total iron binding capacity uh, and transferrin is, is a high. For treatment, Oral iron uh, is okay most of the most of the time, but it can cause stomach irritation and constipation. So if it's not tolerated, we give intravenous iron. Uh, when you give uh, uh, oral iron, make sure the patient takes take them every other day uh, instead of every day, because uh, uh, iron given every other day is more effective because stomach doesn't absorb iron when given every day. Of course, we give intravenous, we don't use the intramuscular anymore. Intravenous iron for patients having poor tolerance with oral iron or uh, when they have celiac disease, uh, gastric bypass surgery, pregnancy, chronic kidney disease undergoing hemodialysis and the inflammatory uh, bowel, bowel disease. Oral iron therapy for those patients will not work due to poor absorption or even poor tolerance. 
After ion therapy, uh, patients feel better pretty soon, but it takes about seven to 10 days for reticulocytosis to reach a peak. And it takes almost a couple of months to reach the normal hemoglobin level. You can see the uh, in about week or 10 days, the reticulocyte uh, peaks, but hemoglobin gradually continues to rise. Form of Vinson syndrome encompasses iron deficiency anemia, swallowing difficult due to a esophageal web, and uh, inflammation in the mouth uh, mouth corners due to angular calitis, and uh, uh, a sore, uh, painful tongue due to atrophic glossitis. Uh, esophageal web can be seen also in uh, bullous skin disease, graft versus host disease, and celiac disease. And the uh, angular calitis also can be seen in riboflavin deficiency. And atrophic glossitis is also quite commonly seen in patients with a vitamin B12 deficiency. The ion therapy relieves most of the symptoms like a tongue pain, but may need a dil dilation of esophagus for the esophageal web. Anemia of chronic disease uh, or chronic inflammation from chronic infection, chronic inflammation, and cancer. We wondered why chronic disease causes low serum ion level and anemia. Now we know why. It's because inflammation stimulates the uh, monocyte to release interleukin-6, IL-6. The IL-6 induces liver to produce hepcidin. Uh, the hepcidin is an interesting protein that uh, decreases the uh, uh, ion carrier protein called transporting. It also inhibits the iron absorption from the gut, all trying to reduce the serum iron level. So when there is not enough iron, even though the total iron uh, uh, amounts in the body is normal or high, they develop anemia. Just simply, they can't really utilize the uh, serum iron. But this low iron is not necessarily bad in patients with the, uh, some kind of uh, ongoing infection because many bacteria, they like the uh, iron for their growth, such as uh, uh, salmonella, micro, uh, tuberculosis, Yersinia, Klebsiella, even uh, Vibrio species. Another cytokines involved in causing anemia is the, uh, are the uh, interleukin-1, and uh, tissue necrosis factor alpha. Those IL-1, IL-6, and tissue necrosis factor alpha uh, suppress the bone marrow erythropoiosis in response to the uh, uh, erythropoietin. Now we understand why patients with the uh, chronic disease have low serum iron and uh, uh, low uh, uh, TIBC, the iron binding capacity and the ferritin is high or normal because they have enough iron, they just can't utilize it, and the saturation is low. Of course, they have a high sed rate because of uh, ongoing uh, infection or uh, inflammation. We uh, treat them with the IV iron and the erythropoietin, but unless you really uh, treat the underlying conditions, they will continue to have a problem with anemia. Anemia of chronic kidney disease has been considered as part of anemia of chronic disease, but is now dealt separately because the cause of anemia is not due to IL-6 or hepcidin, but due to decreased production of EPO erythropoietin from kidney. So treatment with EPO will improve the anemia of chronic kidney disease. Usually we give EPO when the hemoglobin drops below uh, 10, 10 grams. But too much uh, EPO therapy can be dangerous. It stimulates the bone marrow to make red blood cells qu fast, quickly. And if normal hemoglobin levels uh, is reached rather quickly, it can cause blood clots in the leg, lung, heart, and brain, resulting in deep vein thrombosis, pulmonary embolism, stroke, even myocardial infarct infarction. So uh, we, you must keep the uh, hemoglobin less than 11.5 gram when you use the uh, EPO. Thank you for watching.